The Tone Curve, the RGB Curve, and the Tone Equalizer are three modules which are all designed to allow us to affect the distribution of luminosities within an image. So why do we need three of them? I am so glad that you asked. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 99 of Understanding Darktable. This is a video I have been meaning to do for a couple of months and I've been putting it off. A couple of months ago I wrote to Aurelian and I said, is the RGB curve module designed to be seen referred and therefore a replacement for the old tone curve module which was display referred? And he said, mm, not really. And he wrote me another quite detailed email which I will include later in this video and then he went into describing the tone equalizer and I thought that what we would do in this video is have a look at all three and try and understand how they differ I've grabbed an image here of some elephants in Borneo from one of our holidays and what I've done other than white balance and crop is turned off the exposure and the filmic rgb module because i figure we're going to be mucking around with tonal balance anyway so we don't really need filmic in the mix and i've turned on the tone curve the rgb curve and the tone equalizer but all three of them are doing nothing at this point in time so that's it with that in mind i will turn off the left hand side panel and what I want you to look at is the signal processing path here. So on the tone curve, which is now a deprecated module, input, linear or nonlinear, in the LAB color space, and it's display referred. The processing is nonlinear in the LAB color space, and the output is nonlinear in the LAB color space and display referred. And as you know, we are trying to get away from a display referred workflow. If you don't understand why, you probably need to rewatch that video up there about display referred versus scene referred. Okay, RGB curve. This was the module that was introduced with 3.0, I think it was. Input is linear, it's RGB color space, but it is still display referred. The process is non-linear in the RGB color space and the output is once again linear and in the RGB color space and it's still display referred. So again, if we want to be working in a scene referred workflow, we really shouldn't be using the RGB curve module either. Now I will confess, I love my curves modules. So this was why I wrote to Aurelian to say, you know, what are we supposed to do? Because I love a curves module. All right, let's just have a quick read of Aurelian's email and then we'll push on. Okay, so you've read the first half, which was fairly technical. He then goes on to say something you could inform the users about, though, is that the tone equalizer used with the details preservation turned off in the masks tab is conceptually a chromaticity preserving in other words won't mess up your colors rgb curve with a scene referable logic the exposure bias lets users slide the window controls along the scene's dynamic range the difference is instead of directly setting a transform mapping input to output like you would get with the curve in the tone curve or the RGB curve module, which would create problems when the input is way out of the control range, we define a variable exposure correction in the range of minus 8 to 0 EV by which we multiply the input. This lets us get rid of bounds, yada, yada, yada. Okay, what does all that mean? Well, let's just do some processing of this image with each of these modules and see what happens. If I go to the tone curve module and I set a black point 
and I set my white point and then I introduce just a little bit of contrast like so. I can probably push the highlights a little bit harder there. Something like that. What I can do is take a snapshot of that. So that's what we did with the tone curve. Now we will turn that module off. Okay, so now we'll go to the RGB curve and we'll bring in our black point, bring up our white point, introduce a little bit of a contrast curve, and then turn on our snapshot from the tone curve so that we can see the difference. And it's not massively different. Yeah, it all comes down to what exact values I've got dialed in here, and I could probably spend a bit of time trying to get an exact match, and I'm really not that far off it. So between the tone curve and the RGB curve, there's really not a whole lot of appreciable difference at the output, right? Okay, let's get out of the snapshot. Let's turn off the RGB curve. And let's go and have a look at the tone equalizer. Now, as Aurelian said in his email, if you go to the masking tab and the preserve details, which default to an exposure independent guided filter, if you set that to no or off, you've essentially got with this module a chromaticity preserving RGB curve. So what we would do here is dial this mask exposure compensation down until it's sitting fairly well in the middle of this graph. And then you can jump to either the simple or the advanced tab. I prefer the advanced because I've got the histogram that shows me the mask. And from here, we can dial in essentially a contrast S curve. So we could drop our shadows boost our highlights, and we can keep on tweaking these, watching our histogram up the top, until we get something approaching what we had with our tone curve and our RGB curve modules. So let's boost our highlights up a little bit. That's looking from memory something close to what we had before. So, oh, it's just occurred to me, I didn't take a snapshot, did I? So let's just turn that off. Let's turn on the RGB curve and we'll take a snapshot of that. And now I can turn RGB curve off and turn the tone equalizer back on. So now I can compare the results of the tone equalizer to both the tone curve and the RGB curve. So we'll turn on tone curve again. Not a whole lot of difference, and I could probably dial in the settings on my tone equalizer to get a closer match if I wanted to. Or let's have a look at RGB curve. Again, same thing. So what does all this mean to us? Well, what I take away from this is that all three modules will achieve fairly similar results if you want them to. I guess it comes down to if you want to adhere to you know, Aurelian's directive that we should be working towards processing in a scene-referred workflow, then, like me, you will learn to give up the tone curve and the RGB curve modules and learn to use the tone equalizer instead. Now, I have to say, I don't like the interface of the tone equalizer as much as I like an RGB curve module, for instance. With any curves module, what I could do was set the black point, set the white point, just by looking at the histogram, and then add just two control points, one to adjust my highlights and one to adjust my shadows, and I could dial in the contrast that I wanted pretty quickly. And with this, it's a little more complicated. I mean, yes, I could just go, okay, well, I'm going to use, you know, the minus six control to adjust my shadows, and I'm going to use the minus two control to adjust my highlights, and I can kind of get there with that.
I suppose. So, you know, there's ways around it. And by using the tone equaliser, I am sticking to a scene-referred workflow. So, there we go. I hope that has been helpful in some way, shape, or form. And, yeah. Ooh, it's just occurred to me. Next episode is episode 100. Ooh. I don't know what I'm going to do for that. Wow. If you've got ideas, sing out. be great to do a giveaway, but I don't have anything to give away. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, if you've got thoughts, sing out. Uh, this week I have just been knee-deep in trying to set up uh, the new website and trying to learn about e-commerce and setting up an online store and setting up a media management system that will handle all of the media content that will go on the website and trying to set up MailChimp, which I've never had to deal with because I've never run a mailing list. And yeah, I just feel like I'm wading into quicksand and, and slowly sinking in all of this back-end management stuff for the new site. And yeah, I really need to be able to reach out to someone and say, give me a hand with this because I've got no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's to be honest, it's kind of getting a little bit frustrating because I feel like I really want to be spending time creating the content for the masterclass, but I can't really get started on that until I've got all of the, the back end set up. Anyway, we will get there. I'm aiming to roll out in September if I can. Whether I'll get there, we'll wait and see. All right, people, that'll do it for this one, and I will catch you in the next one.